What's up everybody? Chris from South Carolina Gun School and uh, today I just want to kind of give a recap of the uh, training that I went to. Welcome back everybody and I uh, just want to talk about the uh, training event that I went to this past weekend with uh, NOC. Uh, no Other Choice Training. It was an industry train and learn event that they were doing for uh, a lot of people in the firearms industry and instructors uh, were there, uh, gun dealers were there, it was just a wide variety of people were there. I mean, it was just absolutely unbelievable. Just the diversity uh, that was there was absolutely amazing and like a lot of us uh, were talking about at the training and even after the training is how diverse the group was and how what we saw this past weekend is truly what the Second Amendment community is all about. And, and on top of that, not really just the Second Amendment, but what America is about. This was just a phenomenal, phenomenal, I don't even know if there's really words that I can explain how great this training was. So on top of that, thank you Kevin from No Other Choice, uh, Ken from Provectus Group, Mike from Wep or, uh, Munitions Weapons Tactical, uh, Corinne Mosier, Dustin Pluth, Oh God, Kurt from Facts and Firearms, TJ with Tactical Shit, oh God, uh, Kevin, Lord, I know I'm forgetting somebody and I am so sorry, Dave with Proper, um, Jeff with Triumphant Systems, I mean it's just absolutely amazing at the amount of people in the industry that came out for this, I learned a lot shooting I learned a lot in the classroom it, it was just phenomenal 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 I know you're probably gonna hear me say that 50 million times probably through this little video but it, it was absolutely the best hands down firearms industry training I have ever been to ever I mean it was just phenomenal. We started, what, three, four o'clock on Friday. We did some classroom stuff. They helped us learn more about social media and how we can use that to our advantage. Um, you know, being an advocate for the Second Amendment, you know, what you really need to do, and publicity, you know, good publicity, bad publicity, and how you handle those types of things. Um, Saturday, we started early, and we went all Day. And I mean, when I say all day, we started at 8 a.m. and we went till 12 a.m. There was some night stuff that we did, uh, such and such farms, um, and such and such gun club was where we were able to go and do this. They smoked a whole pig for us. Huge shout out to you guys and gals for the amazing food. It was just great. I mean, then Sunday we went back out for kind of a collaboration day. Uh, they had instructors come over to one side to kind of help us out uh, with some few things, giving us pointers and stuff. Some of the media people went over and went ahead and started doing some gun reviews and stuff. They had just a plethora of guns for us to shoot. Uh, Faxes Firearms had a bunch of their firearms out there. Canic had firearms. Century Arms had firearms. Kevin with no other choice and Ken from Perfect Group had their own firearms out there. I mean, it was amazing. Dustin Pluth had some of his competition guns out there. Corinne Mosier, she had some of her competition guns out there. And I got to shoot the STI International Combat Master Gun. John Wick 3, that gun was phenomenal. I mean, phenomenal. I mean, just when you squeeze that trigger and that gun went off, it was just amazing. Uh, I'll have some... I'm going to have pictures and some videos up after this just so y'all can kind of see some of the stuff that we did. Which kind of brings me to my next point. Instructors, if you're not going out and you're not trying to better yourself, shame on you. Shame on you. Now I understand life gets in the way and sometimes we can't make it to things like that. That's fine. But there's other opportunities out there besides this to help you better yourself. 
There's instructor schools, which I'm going to be starting to do more of here in the future. Uh, Mike, that was there from Weapons Munitions, to, Weapons Munitions, to, or, no, I'm getting yours backwards. I'm sorry, Mike. What is it? Munitions, Weapons, Tactical. I'm sorry, Mike. Please forgive me. Uh, I've got a little video with him talking about what they do. Uh, they're right here, local. Uh, in South Carolina, he's down in Columbia. I'm up in the upper state. I think we're like an hour and a half, two hours apart. So I'm definitely going to be doing some work with him just to better myself and some collaboration work to hopefully be able to help other people in the industry. But if you're an instructor and you're not out there trying to better yourself, shame on you. Students, if you're going to somebody that's not going out and trying to better themselves, shame on you too. You need to make sure you do your research uh, when you start going to instructors to ensure you're getting good quality training, all right? Because there, there are some posers out there just like they are in every other industry. Uh, so please do your research when you're going out to look at that stuff. It, it, it's, I cannot tell you enough how great this was. I mean, just awesome. I will be doing it again, but you can guarantee that. This, this, this is going to be one of the things I will push stuff out of the way for to make sure I make it. So, Kevin, if you're listening, you can guarantee seeing me back. Um, I don't care if I'm in a wheelchair. If I got, I'll get one of these motorized wheelchairs and we'll get out there and get it done. But, again, thank you so much for that. Uh, meeting everybody was just awesome. I made some great contacts, great friends in the industry that are available to, to help me out if I do have questions. And same thing that I've told them. You know, if you need help, reach out. I'll give you whatever help I can possibly get. And just so you know, everybody that was there, if you're in or around upstate South Carolina, you have a place to shoot right here. Just hit me up. Y'all have got my contact information. Um, it's going to be listed down in the description of this video. So if you're in or around, you need a place to shoot, give me a buzz. We'll hook it up and make it happen. If I got a class going on, hell, come in and jump in the class. I have no problem with that. Um, just, just absolutely amazing. This is what we need to be about, people. We need to be coming together. We need to be finding out what we can do to help our community, help people in the industry, help new shooters, experienced shooters, whatever it might be. If you're a shooter, you're a Second Amendment advocate. All right? And that was one thing that I enjoyed the conversation that we had uh, when we were sitting around enjoying some of that great food was talking about how we need to clean up the Second Amendment community. You know, we always talk about how <clears throat> some of the other side needs to kind of clean themselves up. We're, we're in that same boat. We've, we've got some cleaning up to do to, to make sure we're not burning bridges and we're getting our point across. Because there are some people out there that there are extremists on both sides. And that's one thing that we, we can't have. We've got to clean, police ourselves, and then help everybody police their, themselves. All right, it goes back to that old saying, you know, you know, oh wow, God, I can't even remember how it goes, but you know, uh, totally drawing a blank here. The biggest thing is, you know, don't talk about somebody else's until your closet's clean or something like that. So we've got some cleaning up to do, and what we did this weekend is a way to do it. So if you see something like this coming up, if you get invited to something like this, you need to go, especially if you're in this industry and you're trying to help people learn the industry or just learn more about firearms themselves. So please, folks, especially industry folks, especially instructors, get out there, get training, better yourself. Check your ego at the door. Believe me. I check my ego every day I go out to my classes because there's going to be somebody that's going to shoot better than you. I hate to say it, but there's always going to be somebody that's going to be a little bit better than you. And I've had people come into my class that have been better than me. I'm not ashamed to admit it. And I've actually learned stuff from them. Just because you're an instructor doesn't mean you stop being a student. All right? So check your ego. Or like Kevin said, drink a lot of water, hydrate, and piss out your ego. So check your ego. Be a student as well as an instructor. I enjoy going and being a student. 
believe me, sometimes being an instructor, getting everything done, making sure everything's right, making sure you're getting everything is very stressful. It's not that stressful to go in and be a student and sit down, put your learning hat on and start learning. So again, huge, huge, huge thank you to everybody that made this event possible. Thank you to Kevin, because I know it is not easy to put stuff like this on. It is a stressful, stressful thing to do. So, tremendous shout out to you. Tremendous shout out to everybody that took time out of their day and a holiday weekend. This was a holiday weekend, people. Holiday weekend. And there were a ton of people out there wanting to learn helping people learn to make not only the Second Amendment community better, but America a better. So please take training. Instructors take training. If you own a firearm, just because you own a firearm does not make you ready for the fight. That's where you need to check your ego. Just because you own 50 guns doesn't mean you know how to fight with those 50 guns. Get trained, go to the right place, do your research, call them, ask them questions. I love when people call and ask me questions. That means they're doing their research to make sure they're getting the right person. If they don't show up, so be it. I'm not gonna cry over it. Hopefully they go somewhere where they are able to get good quality training. There's people all over the place. There's way more people than what you think. Do your research, get out there and get it done. Again, huge thank you to everybody that made it possible. Hope you all made it home safely, and I hope you're out there hustling and getting it done. And I hope to see everybody back out there next year. So after I get done talking here, there's going to be just some pictures and some short videos that I took of the event. Uh, some of the videos, I'm not going to have the um, sound in there because it is... Uh, the instructors providing information that they gave their quality time for so I'm going to respect them and if you want the information you're going to have to go to something like this alright I'm not trying to be an ass if you want to call me an asshole then so be it but that's not what I'm doing I'm trying to be respectful to them because they took time out of their schedule out of their holiday to come out and help learn so some of this stuff you might be silent but that's just because I'm being respectful and I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed looking at some of the pictures on what we did. And if you didn't make it, hopefully you can make it next year.
So Armor has a or, uh, Proper has a pretty extensive armor program. We do both soft and hard armor. We make our own soft armor. Uh, we have level two and level three A. What you see in front of you. Oh, by the way, say hi to Bob. Hi, hey, Bob. He's actually Bob Jr. Because Bob Sr. took a few rounds in the neck from people who couldn't quite hit the target. So he's semi-retired. And Bob Jr. came along and has a twin cousin named Mitch. Mitch is on a traveling road show. We have one of our employees who goes around the country doing armor shoots for local PDs. So we have a little tro uh, road show for that. Mitch got dirty, or Bob got dirty. Um, what's in here is our level 3A. Now let me explain the certification process. So the NIJ is the National Institute of Justice. They are the gold standard for all of the armor produced by anybody who wants to sell armor. It's a testing organization that sends every piece of armor, a sample of every piece of armor, out to laboratories, and then laboratories put the armor through an extensive trial process, including not just shooting it, but shooting it in different conditions. They may have high humidity, like today. They have, may have low humidity. They will submerge the armor, take it back out again, and shoot it and see how it does. And there are standards for all of these qualifications. Everything proper sells has been thoroughly NIJ certified, which is not the same as somebody who says, oh, we have the NIJ standard. Okay, be very particular when you look at the standards of other armor companies who say they're NIJ compliant, NIJ whatever. If it doesn't say NIJ certified, it has not gone through the process, which means they can't really guarantee that it's going to hold, to, uh, hold up to the standard. Now, soft armor is tested to a six shot capacity. So NIJ says you can put six shots in here and it should not fail. I will tell you from personal experience, we have shot a whole lot more rounds into these before they fail. Now, unofficially, our record is 107. That was set last week at the O'Fallon, Missouri Police Department. We, do we ever advertise that and say, oh, we're gonna guarantee to protect you 107? No, we don't tell you that. We can't, we can't say that. But we do have fully NIJ certified armor. Now, this is only pistol armor, the soft armor, up to level 3A, which stops up to 44 Magnum contact shot. How do I know that for sure? I've done it. Okay, I've shot it against there, and I've also seen it done. So, I know it'll stop it. Rifles, that's a whole different classification. That's your level three and level four. That's your hard plates. Steel, ceramic, so forth. We do not sell steel plates because steel plates are unsafe. We sell only ceramic and composite plates. Now, we don't make our own. Pesco and a couple of the manufacturers make it for us. But we do have it available. Here's how the day's gonna go. Well, typically, we have normally a table laid out in front of you with all of the calibers that the NIJ certifies this, this round to be, or this uh, best to be. We don't have all those calibers with us, I don't think. Anybody here have a 44 Magnum? Here, no? Okay. Um, anybody have any special threats like 5.7? No? Good. Perfect. So everything should be com fully compliant when you're shooting this. I'm going to fire six shots into it. We're going to take it off, and we're going to look at the inside of it. Then, after that, you all get to shoot it. And we're going to shoot it until it fails. And, we're, and we need, I need two volunteers to count rounds. One, two, all right, Jeff, oh, great. <laughs> well, the good thing is you'll have to probably have to use both your hands and your toes. I've got a, a I've got a, like a pitch counter in my car. Is it close by? Yeah, it's down there. We can use you it. Wouldn't mind, that'd be great. Yeah. That'd be great. So, uh, any questions about armor in general before we get going? How it's made, any of that stuff? What's the practical use? Is it legal for an uh, average everyday citizen to have that type of armor? It's a great question. The answer is yes. It is a lot looser regulated than a handgun, for example. Um, in fact, we can ship it, as a, as a company, can ship it to any state except Connecticut. <laughs> Connecticut has a law that says we cannot ship armor to people. Connecticut citizens can wear body armor, but we can't ship it to them. don't know why, but that's, that's the, the law. <laughs> so. We can ship to the other 49 states. Gulf state. Um, and it is perfectly appro approved, totally legal for a citizen to use it. However, let me tell you this. Or know somebody if that you, knows somebody. I don't think anybody of you here would do it. But if you commit a crime wearing body armor, your sentence just went up. Okay? So the judges are not nice about body armor in a criminal situation. Okay. Yes? Uh, how does that conceal under uh, normal garments? Okay. Well, this particular vest is an outer carrier. But we also have concealable carriers, which are thinner on the outside and don't have the molly. They're going to be slick. We have them in two-panel and four-panel. This happens to be a two-panel carrier. We also have, for conceal, we have a two P, or a four PV, which is four-panel, front and back, and then two cummerbunds on the sides. And then we have the typical traditional clamshell, 
which is the front and back, which meet in the middle. That is more of under a uniform, under a shirt kind of thing. This, for demonstration purposes, is an outside carrier because we can take this and very easily remove the interior uh, armor if we want to and change it out. Breathable is this? Yes, sir. Uh, well, the armor itself is water sealed, mm -hmm. so it's not really it's watertight, right. so it's not really breathable. But the carrier, it all depends on the material itself. Mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest complaints about car armor is that it's, it's hot, mm -hmm. right? And many, many years ago, it was a lot hotter than it is now. This is a lot lighter um, than the old uh, old armor used to be, and so that helps you with it, that breathability. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no mistaking you're wearing armor when you're wearing it. All right. Good to see you. Anybody else? All right. I'm good. Everybody going? Yep. Hey guys, it's Katie. We're out at the NOC Train and Learn event. I was going to go ahead and tell you about the Triumph Target System, but I decided to let the guy with the worst body talk about it. So go ahead, man. Take away. <laughs> so this is the Pivotal Trainer by Triumph Systems. As you can see, it's a discretionary shooting scenario trainer. So you got shoot, no shoot training to really build up that stress that a lot of uh, people don't have in their everyday training. So there's a training scar in today's industry. You shoot paper. Uh, you shoot steel, uh, you don't have to think about before pulling that trigger. So this really teaches you before you clear leather, before you put a ra uh, round down range, that you're thinking of the consequences that it has on the business end of that bullet. So there's manual mode, you can pick when and which way it turns, or if you're training by yourself, you can put it in automatic mode, and now it's just going to go on a random curve. So it's just all going to go randomized, you're not going to be able to game the target. Everything's extremely replaceable, so the frame is made of 2x2 two two PVC, it's also the same dimension as 2x2 two two lumber, and it only weighs 13 pounds, so it's extremely portable. It can break down and set up in less than minutes. Thank you, Jeff. How much Quick does it cost? Can your splatter targets also go on that system? Sure can. Awesome. How much does it cost? It retails at $399. And can you change out the, do you have other targets that work along with this besides the splatter targets, like maybe um, oh, a, a water gun? or something that is a little bit different than... As, as of now, we don't have anything besides the cell phone. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. This is a great, great event. Yes, cool. yeah. have the timer. Yeah, so you can change the presentation time of how long that target turns and faces towards the shooter when it does turn. You can pick a second and a half, three seconds, or five seconds. Those are the presets built in on the, the remote control. Can you use the threat down target system? Yes, you can. So you can use any uh, target you want to. Obviously, we want you guys using ours, but the whole frame is module. So if you wanted to pick a, we know a lot of people have regulations on what targets right. they can train with. So you can make it a little bit longer, make it a little bit taller, make it more uh, wider if you don't want to have to any chance at all to shoot that frame. So it's really up to your imagination with these systems. And what's the website where people can find these? Uh, www.triumph-systems.com. Do you have an Instagram? I sure do. It's just Triumph Systems, all lowercase, one word. Same on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, all social media. We're up there. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Thank sir. you. I can to protect you and I just hope that you do the same thing. 
It's all love and compassion, but I would like to see the 2A community kind of clean themselves up first. Let's show love to, to one another and support one another. Then we can...
out here with NOC. A little industry day. Getting to demo some guns, do some videos. Everybody's out pew pewing. Did you find Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is a lie. Very nice. Nice. Very nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank Both have match grade barrels into them. Uh, same spring setup, same guide rods. Uh, the sights are, are pretty pretty identical. Yeah. Um, I like that very, the fiber out the front side is super yeah. like, easy to dial in on. Yeah. So uh, my big thing is muscle memory, right? So from trigger pull to grip, all of that. So you'll notice my legit carry guns have the same sight setup, right? So all my guns all have a fiber optic front sight and a black uh, back sight. Just the competition, the, the five inch, and then this 525, and my other ones all have adjustable back sights. Okay. That way I can adjust them, but everything is all, all muscle memory. Okay. Do you find the fiber optic is easier to pick up with the all black rear sight? Yeah, yeah, so I can I can just see that, that dot, and whatever that color it might be for you. So it might be green, it might be red, uh, blue, yellow, whatever it is, uh, you can just pick that up, and I'm driving that dot, in essence, uh, straight to the target, right? Uh, so the same thing of uh, an optic, like a red dot. Hmm. One inch thick at the takedown lever, 3.3 .3 inch barrel. Uh, to shorten it up and thin it up, we had to take that feature out. Okay. Uh, so that does change on how the firearm works. And actually, this is the first one that has an external uh, extractor to it. Okay. You notice all the other Springfield models are actually internal. Okay, all right. Um, another thing I noticed too, like with this, it was, uh, it felt actually a bit in my hand heavier because it's such a smaller package yeah. than the other ones. Like yeah. this one's felt probably the lightest, <laughs> but then this one, I was just like, wait, this is a small compact, but it's got like, a little bit of weight yeah, to it, yeah. <laughs> uh, because once again, under that stressful situation, um, you kind of want to. We got a 
So your safety? There you go. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, so this thing is... Disrespectful, you just smacked the you <laughs> That was the hardest thing to do. Well, let me go. What? Uh, yeah, run it, run it. <laughs> Still work. Oh, you ready? I want some B roll footage. All right, let's see. I like the uh, optic. Yeah, so you can power it up. So this is the, uh, it's a one to eight from Vortex Strike Eagle. Uh, it's a millimeter lens. Uh, so you can power it up, power it down. You can power now. If you want the reticle to light up, you can tune it up. Uh, whatever you like, go for it. Thank you. Yeah, man. Whenever, remember in January we had those like blistering cold days. Everybody said. I'm ready for a You know, like a one man, or like a full man. Right? It, it ended right as soon as you. Yeah, you want this one? <laughs> it's There's nice, right? Oh, that was a snap cap. <laughs> That's a hot oh, cool. I guess I was training with that one last. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just testing your skills, you know? Hey, that's what we got to do. <laughs> I use those all the time in my class. Oh, yeah, they're fantastic. I was yeah. doing some flinching today, some anticipation. Tool. And always remember folks, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.